a particular subject has been popping up the last couple of years. It's time for Hidden and Dangerous 2 Sabre Squadron. Wir haben nichts gefunden. Das ist unmöglich. Weitermachen. Jawohl. Hello there. And welcome to my Hidden and Dangerous 2 Sabre Squadron walkthrough. You all saw this one coming, didn't you? First things first, don't be confused by the green bars, or uh, I don't know, the green sides. For some reason this game does not support native 1414p. The deluxe version did, I don't get it. So I had to download a few to few mod which fixed the problem in game at least. So you won't see the green bars then, but unfortunately in the menus you will. It is what it is. 
at least you can enjoy the gameplay normally. Um, today we're going to play the training, and I'm going to select my, well, at least three to go to people. I've never been sure about uh, Basil here, because my standard team is always Turner, Tetno and Jenkins. But the fourth one, uh, used to play whatever. But at least Turner is my guy, uh, which I will lead this, you know, entire campaign with. Um, I will also let you read the uh, well, documents and diary before and after the mission, so you, you can follow the story yourself. Let's get into the training. This weather is perfect. Rain and mud. Just the way we like it here. Even your own mother won't recognize you by the time I get through with you. But looking at you, that won't be such a bad thing. Okay now, pay attention. You need to get through the snake track. And remember, I'll be watching you, so there better be no dawdling. Then, over the game packs and climb over all of the wooden fences. Then, up the wall as though the devil himself was after you, and down through the trenches. You best then be on your belly, soldier, to stay under the razor wire. I want you to taste the dirt, so let's see what you can do. Move it! Quick note beforehand, those who do not want to play the training can actually skip the training. To start, I'm going to change my control settings. I've always been more used to the WASD kind of movement instead of the arrow keys. So I'm going to change the default setting of this game to my preference. As of what I'm going to do with this video series, now it's basically the same as the Hidden and Dangerous Deluxe box through I did. I'll only be talking when I think it is necessary or when I want to share some information. Or just talk when I feel like it. Um, I will not do the easter eggs which are in this game. You might see me um, do one part or show a section of it. But if you want to learn about the easter eggs, I suggest you YouTube some other videos about it. I will only do the main objectives and sometimes some additional objectives as well. But I will be primarily focusing on well, the main part of the game. As for the game itself, I will be playing the standard game as well as the expansion pack. Call it Courage Under Fire, call it Sabre Squadron. I will play every single mission available. I like the little details in this game. I will now be talking to the soldier over here, and in doing so, it will change the text he will say when you're completing the firing range challenge. What are you waiting for? Move! Can't you read English? The sign says exit, now move! Do you have a problem with English? I told you, the entrance is on the other side of the building. This is the exit! Gotta enjoy some fun dialogue in the game. I also like to troll these instructors like this. So, you made it this far. Well done. My name's Blair. I hope you like the weather we've laid on for you. Okay, soldier, you came here to learn how to shoot, so let's see what you can do. Just gotta love it how he stares in the distance while I'm off hiding behind the wall. That's a Colt 1911 on the table, and the one next to it is an Enfield 38. Whenever you're out of ammo, look for a crate like this. You may find all kinds of items in them. Like ammo magazines, grenades and guns. Pick one and let's see how you do on the firing range. I want you to shoot the wooden targets. You cannot aim down your iron sights when you're using a pistol in this game for whatever reason. You can with every other gun in the game, but not a pistol. Okay, now you've got the hang of them, we'll move on. Leave I like how the pistol suddenly disappears when he says let's go. It will happen with every other gun following this as well. That's a Thompson. You may have heard the lads call it a Tommy gun. It can be used with a drum magazine, but that makes it noisy when the bullets rattle through. So if the drum's attached, it's no good for stealth missions. Next to it is a BAR. I'm sure you're familiar with it. Let's take a look at you now. When firing, brace yourself for the recoil. You have to hold it right or you could easily miss the side of a barn. To aim, it's best to kneel or lay down, but there's not always time for that. Not 
not bad. Leave the guns here for the next recruit and follow me. Now I'll show you something a bit more specialised. This is a Springfield with a scope. If it was up to me, you rookies would never even get to touch it until you've proved yourselves in combat. But it's my job to make sure you know how to use it. You won't get your hands on it too often, so make the most of it now. This is unfortunately one of the side effects of the view to view mod I have installed to on this game in 4040p. Normally the outsides of the sniper scope will be black, but Thanks for this mod, you can see right. the map itself. Don't really like it, but you know, I prefer to use it this way than to not run this game in 4040p. This is the Browning machine gun. It's a serious piece of hardware and deadly in combat. Let's see how you handle it. Shoot out the bullseyes on the wooden targets. Well done. When you join your unit, be sure to tell them it was me that taught you how to shoot straight. This one was pretty good, Craig. Him? I hope he can shoot better than he can read. This was the chase in dialogue that I spoke of earlier. Normally he would say something about none of us passing, but thanks to you interacting with him prior to entering the firing range, he will say this text instead. I haven't seen you here yet. You're new, aren't you? We don't have much time, but you look like a capable sort of chap, so I'll be brief. On the left are attack grenades, type number 69. They detonate immediately upon impact. The others are type number 36. They're much more efficient and have a time-delayed detonator. The heaviest piece of equipment you'll see here is the bazooka. Be careful which end you aim with. If you get it wrong, you won't be too popular with what's left of your unit. So make sure you get it right. Okay, show me what you can do. Hit the wooden targets and then aim for the tank as it moves across the back of the range. The barrel over there must be destroyed as well. I dislike this training session the most, simply because the dummies you have to hit don't have the best of hitbox scans. So even though you think that you hit the target, the game will register it as a miss. So you, in the worst case scenario, might be trying to hit a target over and over and over again. So I hope you will be more lucky than I was this round. See what I mean? That was a hit. Why did the game register it as a miss? I don't get it, but whatever. I will keep on trying. And that finally concludes this section of the training. Well done, old boy. That's it for now. Move on to the next station. This is the instructor I like to troll the most because of one simple reason. This one. The sergeant needs someone to try out the new diving equipment up at the pool, and you've just been volunteered. Take the jeep and tell him I sent you. When he's finished with you, bring the jeep back here or I'll have your guts for garters.
driving in first person doesn't feel good in this game so I usually switch to third person because well just look at it it just does not feel comfortable for whatever reason I don't really know how to describe it but it's just this uncomfortable feeling I get on driving in first person that I switch to a third person perspective Good, a volunteer. Charlie sent me, didn't he? This task is a little bit complicated, so listen carefully to me. Behind this fence is a guarded area with a swimming pool. What I want you to do is to sneak into the area without being detected by the guards. Then, you'll have to enter the building and search for the diving equipment hidden inside. When you find it, put it on. Dive into the pool and search the bottom for dog tags. Collect them and bring them to me. Remember, if a guard notices your presence, the alarm will be raised and you'll feel. Oh, and leave the diving equipment where you found it. Otherwise, the guard will notice and become suspicious. Now, take this wire cutter because the gate's locked. Cut through the fence and go. I'll wait here. This is one of the most difficult sections of this mission. I will show you why in a bit.
This problem is why I mentioned it is one of the most difficult sections of this mission. I can't exit the pool and I don't know why. <laughs> it's quite unbelievable, you know. I try to jump, I try to climb, but nothing seems to work out. And I'm just trying to figure out, what, you know, how can I exit the pool? It's just a simple task, but made all that more difficult by the game's mechanics. And it just keeps going on and on and on and on. But finally, at last, I managed to escape the deadly pool of doom. The reason why I stayed at this spot is because I thought that my movement was actually the movement of the guard outside, but it actually was mine, so I waited for nothing. And when I did try to leave, well, this happened. Luckily for me, there is one more door, so I will use that one to escape. Excellent. I like you. Well done. Proceed to the next station. Thanks a lot. At last. You stop off for tea on the way here. Follow me. This way. I've prepared some explosives here. You'll be needing them for demolition work on your missions, so it's important that you know how to use them safely. You can see that they're in ordinary satchels, so they don't draw attention. Well, until they're activated, that is. There are a couple of things that you need to remember about handling explosives. Before you detonate them, you must be sure that your unit is positioned safely away from the blast area. Secondly, 
Be sure to place them so that they cause the maximum amount of damage to the target. Don't use explosives in a location that'll kill only one enemy soldier. That's what your knife is for. Now, take the explosives and go behind the blast walls. Place the explosives near the wooden roadblocks and quickly come back. teeth. It was only a roadblock, not a tank. How much do you put back there? Okay. You've passed your explosives training. Go on to the next station. The squad training is one of the more annoying portions of this mission. They feel a bit unresponsive and don't really, well, follow you as much as you like them to do. I will show you some examples later on. Gentlemen, here we have another candidate for team leader. You have to order the soldiers in the unit to run to the barrels. Advance over there! Show. Now, have each of them crawl under the barbed wire and make their way to the other side. Follow me! This is the follow you section I was mentioning earlier. I really have some trouble fitting all these soldiers under the barbed wire. Like, I really do my best to make them follow my lead in you know, train-like fashion, there. but I'm just struggling so much, as you can see from the remaining length of this video. Like, it's a simple task. Crawl under the barbed wire and be done with it, but for some reason they really, really struggle to do such a simple task. Follow me! To make matters even worse, Jenkins over here is now actually damaging himself to a near-death experience. Like, how do you even do that? <laughs> Why can't this game be a little bit smarter? At least he made it, but barely. And this is just training, you know. And now Elliot is following Jenkins' example, like, you're SAS soldiers, come on! Barbara should not be able to stop you like that. Stay here.
Advance over there! Follow me! The struggle continues. Follow me! Speaking of near-death experiences, here is another one. Follow me! Follow me! Advance over there! Advance over there! Advance over there! At last I finally managed to get all my soldiers under the barbed wire. Mission complete. At the end of each mission I will be showing you the progression a soldier has made, as well as the diary so you can follow the story even more. This unfortunately is also one of the downsides of the Field of View mod I had to download, but I hope you are still able to read all these diary pages. I forgot that the save and continue option would immediately start the next campaign, so here is a preview of what you can expect next video. Keep your altitude low, we're approaching the radar range, and stop chatting, we need this frequency clear. Come on Mike, there's nothing but snow and ice for hundreds of miles. Yes, at least joking around relieves the boredom of the mission. I know what you mean, I'd rather be with those boys fighting the Luftwaffe. Oh really? And I'm here for the riveting conversation. That's easy for you to say, you're just here for this mission. We're above the coast, pull up. Climbing to 400. Zero, zero. Chaps down below, that looks interesting. Damn, we've got company, five o'clock. It looks like there are two of them. Sagen Sie bei der 
Besprechung über diesen Einsatz. Ich habe ein Feindflugzeug gesehen und Sie haben es abgeschossen. Sehr schön, Leutnant. Sehr schön. That was it for the training. Next time we will start the first mission, first actual mission. Hope to see you then. Goodbye.